Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. We're gonna talk Future Stars, day number one. Talk about everything that happened today. The awesome new objective cards in Odegaard, the SBC for Moise Keen, the player selection, the cards and packs. Tons of crazy stuff today, and even a new season with new, uh, the icon objectives are all out, the icon swaps are all out, um, and all sorts of stuff. So. We got a ton of new content today. We're going to talk a little bit about it here. And then we're also going to talk about some of the EA mess up stuff that happened uh, earlier today as well. So we're going to be taking a look at a lot of the pages. And I want to look at the team first because I think this is what we noticed first about today. Uh, we'll talk about the objective. I think the objective Odegaard is like the the biggest win on FIFA that we've had in, in a long time. Because it's something new. It's something that we've seen in other EA titles like Madden. And they finally brought it to foot. And the concept just... Uh, springs so much more possibility into the future, basically. But batch one, so this this again guarantees we're getting two sets of future stars. And it makes sense, right? Because we don't have guys like Haaland in this group. A lot of people thought that he was getting in uh, and, and among others that we don't have in this group. But I think this is a pretty solid batch one. But I also see that there's going to be, I think batch two will be pretty good as well. I wonder if they'll make it actually two full weeks instead of like one week and then a half a week. We'll have to see. But Zhao, Felix, Rodrigo, Tonali. So these are the guys on the loading screen from yesterday, which we did end up guessing and end up guessing correctly. Uh, Greenwood is a nice one, the striker uh, position. That card's pretty expensive right now. Uh, Martinelli got a, a skill move and a weak foot upgrade, I believe. He's three-star, three-star. Dominguez, Mason Mount, uh, Kabak. Don't know that guy, but that's a nice-looking card right there. Uh, Diaby, Martinez, Kamara, Musa Dembele, who we've seen before with some special cards. And then uh, Max Ahrens and Emerson. I'm actually really pumped about both of these guys because they kind of, you know, Max Ahrens is an insane card, but it's still pretty solid. It's a 90 pace right back that is English in the Prem. So a lot of people will be interested in that card. And then we finally have a Brazilian right back that we can use, right? We always used to have Danny Alves and that was like your Brazilian right back that you could use. Now we have Emerson. 89 pace, 89 physical, looks like a pretty solid card. Um, and I want to make a point about this Lissandro Martinez. So many people thought we were getting Lataro Martinez, future star. And I think EA kind of used this one here when they were putting into the code, you know, to kind of like play a trick on the people that like to leak cards that we get every week. Uh, because, you know, uh, an Argentinian Martinez, people probably thought of Lataro right away, but it was actually Lissandro Martinez. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Overall, I think it's a really solid set of cards. This card, Tonali, if, if I had to pick up one card from this entire set as the best card that they released today, it would either be Zhao Felix or Tonali. This Tonali card, right away when I look at it, it kind of reminds me of Balak. He kind of looks like a Balak-esque player. Um, I don't know what his build like is in game, but his stats just look incredible. So this is going to be maybe like Awar's future star last year. This card's going to be used for the rest of the game because that is an end game card. Jao Felix is end game, Rodrigo is end game. So a lot of these cards are really good. Even Mason Mount has some pretty good looking stats. I think he's only got three star skills, but um, four star weak foot, that's nice. So a lot of good uh, cards that we did get today. I'll talk about Odegaard again in a second. We'll look at that in the game. And then of course, I wanna cover these frequently asked questions. These are basically the same as last year. Somebody who's 23 or under and has high potential, but has not yet become an established uh, global star or has not been released in the past Future Stars campaign. So going forward, we know that we're not going to be getting duplicates, basically. So the whole Calvert-Lewin thing with the the birthplace or whatever with the coordinates in, in the code or on the loading screens, maybe that's not going to be the case. I don't. It doesn't look like, based on what this says, it doesn't look like a past future star is going to be getting a card. So that's interesting to point out. How are the ratings determined? It's all about what they could achieve at their the peak of their career. And that's kind of the whole thing with the objective, the upgradable objective players as well. So kind of what you do is you, you have that dedicated objective, you earn that version, and then you submit that card and you, uh, you do the other objective. So I want to go talk about that Odegaard right now. We're going to go into objectives and talk about everything that we saw in here today. Uh, and of course, we did get the icon swaps. I'm going to cover those first and we'll look at the season. Uh, I think they did another 
Uh, this is pretty nice, by the way, the no room for racism stuff. That's really cool. GGCE on that. They did say that it was going to be coming in the future, and they have put it in now. A stadium theme, a TIFO, and I think a badge. No room for racism, which is a pretty cool. That's pretty cool, honestly. And a lot of people are going to get that because it's really early on in the levels. So that's pretty awesome from EA there. Objective um, storyline players, Kalu, which is a pretty solid looking right mid. Nigerian, not Nigerian. Is that Nigerian? Am I right? Am I close? Where's the Where's the nationality? Nigeria. I was right. Thank you. I was thinking of Kocha. Four star, four star, high medium. Not a bad card. Um, Yamaguchi, which is a pretty good looking card. A center mid for um, Vissel Kobe. Not a terrible looking card. Japan links right there. And then El Shirawi. I think a lot of people might end up taking this card just for the you know the FIFA feels. This guy just hits you in the FIFA feels if you've played FIFA for a long time. Uh, those. A set of three cards, more TIFOs, some packs in here, some celebrations. But at the end, I think at the end of the season, which you need a lot of uh, XP for, you need 100,000 XP. But Akanji, Malinkovic Savage, and Kovacic are all pretty solid options, I think. If you're going to pick one of these cards, I think I might have to go with Akanji. Um, because this card looks really, really good. A lot of you guys have that in Babu. This is a card you can stick right next to him. Malinkovic Savage is a pretty pretty solid card as well. Hasn't gotten any informs or special cards this year um, that I can think of off the top of my head. Four star, four star. He's a FIFA favorite from years past. And then Kovacic. This is like the highest rated card I think Kovacic has ever had. At least from what I've seen playing FIFA. So this is a pretty solid looking card as well. If you get to that level 30, um, I'm really curious to see who, who you guys are thinking about taking as of right now. Of course, it's going to be a while before you get there. This season's a long one. 41 days or 42 days is this entire season. And that again does mean that icon swaps are out and that all of the swaps are attainable. So you can kind of grind at your own pace. If you're going all the way for the Essien, that's something that you can get on right now. If you're going to do the mid icon pack, uh, that's something that you can start grinding towards as well. So the second set of 12 swaps have been released. And I also think that this gives them the okay and the ability to start putting out or to start thinking about putting out the base or the mid icon upgrade SBC. So since we have this pack available through icon swaps now, since all the uh, tokens are out, I think they're going to allow themselves to put that SBC out here in the next couple weeks for sure. So Again, these tokens really quick. It's basically the same. Uh, you got to win a lot of a lot of games. Though. Win 12 foot champs games, five rivals, five rivals, four rivals. Though they're pretty tough. Again, the the uh, online matches are pretty tough, and uh, the offline ones you can kind of do what it is. But you need some legendary difficulty there, which is interesting. I don't really grind that stuff to be honest. I kind of stay away. We have an Henri Tifo, which is cool. And then let's talk Odegaard. So this is how the kind of the Odegaard thing goes, right? You kind of have to work your way down this list and you kind of just kind of work at these right and you get the different cards so you have the 87 odegaard which is the foot future star academy is like the name of this card rise through the ranks with odegaard and earn untradeable rewards so basically you start off you do this score three goals using midfielders and you submit this odegaard or you get this 80 rated odegaard then you have to use him, score three goals using 80 overall Future Stars Academy Odegaard. You get a one player pack. Boom, you keep going. You got to score assist two goals with him. And you got to score using the 80 rated card in four separate matches to earn the 84. So you have to score three goals, assist two, and then score in four separate matches. And is this say in what game mode? It doesn't say in any game mode. Interesting. So you can actually do this in like online friendlies or, or like. In squad battles if you really wanted to is what I'm seeing. That's actually really cool. I did not see that at first. Assist two through balls using the 84 overall future stars and rivals. Okay, now we have the specific um, instructions. But then what you do is kind of you get that 80 rated card and that unlocks the 84. You get that 84 and then you continue down. You get the 85 and you, you finish these objectives while getting the 85. And then play 20 games with Odegaard in your starting lineup. Of course, you're going to get that by the end because you're going to have to, you're going to end up playing with him for 20 games using the 80, the 84, and the 85 rated cards. And then of course we have the plus one, which is score in Division Four above, and you get uh, a 50k pack. So you get a 50k pack if you're in Division Four above. So there's some a little bit more incentive for those higher rated Division grinders, which is pretty nice. 
Uh, and then there's an, an SBC over here that kind of goes along with this, right? Is it Future Stars Challenge? No, it's this one. Big Transfer Odegaard. Exchange all versions of the Foot Future Stars Academy Odegaard. So you in here, you turn in the 80, the 84. Is that what it is? You turn in the 84, you turn in the 80, the 85, and the 87. Really? So you, you can turn in the 87 and get the and get a 50k pack? Interesting. Exchange all versions of Foot Futures Academy Odegaard. So if you don't want the card, you can grind the objective and turn in all of these to get a 50k pack. You, you get 200 coins for each of these and you put in. Interesting. That is very interesting. I think that's how it goes, right? Am I mistaken by this? I think that's how it goes. That's very intriguing. Yeah, so you get up to the 87, you can either keep it or put it in this SBC for a 50k pack. So that's kind of cool that you, if you don't want the card, you can still grind up to it and turn in for a 50k pack if you really want to. That's intriguing. Anyways, uh, but this concept is massive. Honestly, this is the picture over here on Twitter. Play them, upgrade them is kind of the way that EA has marketed this. For the first time ever in FIFA Ultimate Team, you can upgrade select future stars by completing dedicated milestone objectives. And again, they said this year that they were going to really hone down and put a lot of stuff into objectives. Think about it. They made icons, SBCs that we had last year. All those are attainable through objectives this year. We've got seasons and season progress, milestone players, storyline players, and now we have um, upgradable foot future star uh, academy players so this is all like an objective grind trying to get people to grind the game uh and maybe try to make it a different aspect like more grindable side of things and the more like pay to win side of teams so today we got a grindable objective and then the cards and packs as well so whatever it is if you like grinding objectives i might even go for this just because it's the very first one and it doesn't seem too terribly hard right off the bat I do feel like they could have made it easier though. Instead of having the 84 or the 85, why don't we just go 80 to 84 to 87 and make it a three part, you know? Just make it a three part thing. And then instead of having the 85, just keep that out of there and make it even easier. Because I mean, this card is pretty good, but uh, is it gonna be like that super end game and that super amazing? I don't know. One thing to note is, one thing to definitely note is that this card could be getting a winter upgrade because right now on so fifa uh his card i'm gonna pull up this tweet actually i tweeted about it earlier today because i thought it was pretty important information right here's the tweet odegaard is getting a plus four from his 78 rated base gold card right here to his 82 which is on so fifa that's a plus four rating right and of course he does have the 80 the 84 85 and 87 and uh if they go by last year's rules right the, the stats that are on this website have to be higher than this 82 rated inform, which they are. He's got 78 pace on the inform. On Sofifa, I think he has like 80 pace or something like that. So that means he should be getting the upgrade to the special cards. But is that going to affect these um, the Foot Future Star Academy cards? And in the 87, is it actually going to end up affecting those cards? We just really don't know yet if it is or not but i think that it should because they upgrade other objective cards or like sbcs like last year with footmas sbcs they upgrade those when those players get winner upgrades so odegaard should go to an 82 for his base card moving this inform to an 84 which i then think would move this card to like an 84 and this one to an 86 this one to an 87 and i think this 87 would go to an 88 so i do think that he could get another plus one boost through winter upgrades which might give him 90 pace and then we're talking about a really, really sick card right here. So if that does if that does happen, this could be a pretty mental card. Obviously, he's not going to fit into a ton of teams because he's Norwegian and he's from Real Sociedad. So the links aren't really there. But this is the first of hopefully many that we get of the Foot Future Stars Academy or just the grindable objectives upgrading through different progressions. Um, as, as EA words it, progressing through their career as their cards as they get older and as they continue to progress in their career. So again, the really, really cool thing behind this is just the thought process, right? The thought process that stuff like that could be coming um, throughout this game, throughout the rest of the year, and in many other ways to come, right? That's the first time that we've ever had that though. It just opens the doors to so many possibilities. Like I said, I think it's in Madden already. They have like a grindable and upgradable players by just playing the game. So. It's a GG that we finally got those in FIFA. We got a Moise Keen SBC today as well. 83 and 84 rated squads, no informs. 
Uh, this card is just fine. I mean, it's okay. It's cool if you're a Moise Keen fan or an Everton fan um, or this guy fits in your squad and you want to do him, go for it. He's only out for two days though. So unless we get upgrade packs tomorrow, I don't think a lot of people would do this uh, unless people are trying to grind some upgrade packs to pack a future star or so. Uh, and then we also got a um, mega pack from the future stars challenge SBC today as well. This one really threw me a loop first time. Like I don't know what the heck was going on with this SBC, but you can turn in all four versions of that Odegaard if you want the 50K pack, if you really want to. I would be curious to see if people do that, like how rigged that pack is, because sometimes we know like objective packs. I've gotten a lot of good things out of the objective packs. I wonder if a pack like this would be pretty rigged too, like have special odds on it or something. I don't know if EA can do that, but that is something to think about. And then, of course, uh, Trent Alexander-Arnold's Player of the Month. There was more Player of the Month voting that came out today before the promo started. So uh, that is something that we have to keep in mind as well. We'll talk about market stuff in just a second. I'm still trying to sell some things. As you guys know, they dropped the new team today, but there were some massive, massive mix-ups from EA uh, in terms of server stuff. And I want to look at this for a second over on Twitter. And you guys were probably aware of this. You had some issues, especially on the PlayStation 4. There were issues with people connecting. They disabled match creation. And people like literally weren't able to log on to the game for like two and a half hours. The lightning rounds didn't sell out. Um, there were like open bids expiring. People getting stupidly good deals because some people were on the game on the web app. Some people were not on the game. And it just kind of was a mess for EA today in this promo, right? Because they weren't making the money that they would have made if the lighting rounds would have sold out, which the first one, the 50K lighting round, sold out in the flash, right? But then we had the server issues and the second and third lighting rounds with 100 and 125K packs, they didn't even sell out both times. So that kind of hurt EA's pocket today. So hopefully they figure out how to fix their freaking servers so that they know that this doesn't happen to them again or they can fix Whatever happened today doesn't have to, have to happen again because they're just hurting themselves out of money when that kind of stuff happens. So I'm sure they're not happy about that, but it is what happened today. So that really threw this market for a loop, right? Because you, these guys usually would have gotten more supply. These cards are pretty rare right now. Felix was 2.4 million coins uh, right away when the packs came out, and then he boomed right back up. He's up to 2.9. He's actually down to 2.7. He was selling at 2.9 for a moment, and this is basically just due to nobody was on the game, and there was no supply for these. There was not packs being opened as people couldn't access the game. Once the game came back online, there weren't as many lightning rounds, or people were just like not going to open packs. EA did release a later lightning round, which I thought was going to happen. They did end up doing it, um, but it was 125k pack lightning round kind of later in the night. So I'm really curious to see what happens with these cards tomorrow. Now, a lot, of, obviously, um, a lot of people were looking at these cards and thinking, yo, these might be really, really good for overnight flips because the pack weight on these is really similar to headliners. And the first week of headliners, the overnight flips from one night into the second were really good. So I was really hoping to do some of that with these cards, but since the whole server issues today, I'm not going to be touching that. These cards are really high. Let them drop, please. They're going to get packed more tomorrow, in my opinion. Will you see them rise up in the morning? Maybe a slight bit, but honestly, I wouldn't expect a too terrible amount of a rise on them. Maybe a guy like Martinelli rises up a little bit, um, just because these are the type of cards that everybody wants to try, right? Brazilian left mid, you can dump him in your team pretty easily. Uh, an English right back from the Prem, you can put him in pretty easily. A center back that's French, you can throw him in pretty easily. So a lot of these guys, people are probably just going to try to buy, throw in their teams. But I do expect these guys to go down a little bit as we continue through the week. And that's what I would say. If you're looking to buy one of these, we'll kind of look at the situation more tomorrow and see what happens with more pack weight. Um, but I do think they're going to drop down a decent amount. Speaking of pack weight, 2.9% odds of packing one of these from a 100,000 coin pack. So these cards are very similar to the headliners from last week. I think the headliners were like around 3% out of 100K and I think it's like three and a half or 4% from the 125K packs for these cards. So these cards are pretty rare. They honestly are pretty rare and uh, that's good for us as a, a trading sense for a trading out of packs. When these cards go out of packs, they will make them more tradable and more investable. Uh, and stuff like that. So again, if you want to buy one of these cards, start to like think about later in the week as a possible time frame to get in on some of these. I want to look at Tonali right now. You know, it's easy to search these cards too because they don't have any other special items, at least most of them. 
You don't have to put like a minimum buy now on any of these. You just kind of search up the special and boom, they're there. So Tonali right now is 1186. Again, this card looks ridiculous. Ridiculous. I'm really curious to see what the reviews are for some of these cards, how they play in game, how they feel, and how people rate them. But yeah, today was an interesting day of content, right? We got some of the most content and like best content that we've had, especially with the, the like the upgradable players through the grinding, through objectives and stuff like that. Um, I guess one thing that I should mention as well is the weekend league got extended. It's honestly tempting me to play, um, but I don't know if I'm going to end up getting that done. It's kind of like, do I want to work on Odegaard this weekend with the little time that I have? Or do I want to try to play weekend league and get some packs for this promo? And maybe if there's going to be a good um, stuff happening this weekend with team of the week type players, that sort of thing. But I'm probably just going to stay away from it. We'll see what happens. You guys will see in the next video tomorrow, basically. But that's kind of my thoughts for this weekend. You do have an extra day though. So that's the only thing that's tempting, right? If I don't get my games done on a Sunday, Saturday, Sunday, like I normally would, I would have Monday evening to be able to grind some of this if I wasn't going to grind Odegaard. So just some, one thing to think about uh, with that with that right there. Again, we have a little bit of headliner stuff that we have to talk about as well. I know you're like, dude, why are we talking about headliners? Because uh, we just got a new promo, but there are more games this weekend. And that means that these cards are impacted. Salah, headliner Salah. Uh, I think Liverpool play, Liverpool play Southampton today, probably a few hours after this video goes live. Um, and Liverpool is, they've been winning, man. Liverpool has been playing exceptionally well. I think they're on a three game win streak in the Prem, which is what people are really interested with this. And, you know, of course, this is what we're really looking for in terms of, um, the streak, right? So Liverpool right now are on a three game win streak in the Prem. That's what SofaScore is telling me right now. So does that mean Salah is going to be getting upgraded if they win tomorrow? Liverpool beat Manchester United on the 19th, which was their first game after Salah came out. Then they beat Wolverhampton on the 23rd. So there's two in a row. And then they also beat West Ham on the 29th. So those are all Premier League games. So Salah, they're, if they win this game against Southampton uh, today, that means he's getting an upgrade as far as I'm concerned. And I don't hear a ton of people talking about this, but this is something that we need to, to think about and to talk about because I think Salah is going to be the first person to get an upgrade. He's 1.96 million coins right now. Wow, that's nuts. If you have this card, and again, I've talked about this a lot, since these guys are really inflated, almost 2 million coins right now, I would sell this card pre-game. If you had this in your squad, he's going up plus one, right? He's going to get the 80 physical. It's a benchmark stat. He's not going to, he might hit 90 passing as well. That would be another benchmark stat. But this card at 2 million coins, do I think that he's worth it? I don't know, man. That's a lot of coins for this card. If I were you, since I, since knowing that he was like a 1516 earlier, is this one fresh? One owner, 25 games played. Interesting. Cheapest one on the market right now. Man, this is crazy, dude. 1.96 mil. This guy was 1-2 one, one first day. He was 1.2 mil first day two weeks ago when they were in packs. I would take the safe route and take the coins on a card like this. Because if you compare him to like one of the new cards, like what if we compare him to um, Rodrigo, Rodrigo, however you say his name. Let's compare over here and flip in really quick. This new Rodrigo card. Let's compare these two. 93 versus a 91 rated. Uh, he's 600K less in price. So he's minus two on shooting, minus two on passing, plus one dribbling. Defense we don't care about. And then minus nine on physical. Skill move and weak foots are the same. So yeah, Salah does have a, a pretty solid advantage in terms of total stats ahead by 19. But in-game stats, he's only ahead by 24. So... And he's Brazilian, so easy, a little bit more easy to link. But of course, Salah is a live item. Still, that doesn't make me change my thought process behind these. If you have a Salah, if he's going to get upgraded, it's probably going to take 48 hours, that's what they said, to upgrade these cards. So I would take the coins. If you can get a sale at 2 million coins on this card, I think I would take it because there's so many new cards in the game that people might want to go and try out. And I think these are going to act like Road to the Finals will. Once they get that upgrade, people are going to expect they go up even higher and they're going to drop because people are going to be selling on top of those cards and just cause some panic. So if you have a Salah in your squad, I would try to get the get it out at like 2 million coins-ish. Maybe, like, maybe a little bit more than that if people start to realize tomorrow, hey, he's going to get upgraded. 
but I feel like that upgrade to the 94 rated card is kind of built in his price because people knew Liverpool was going to win four in a row. So that's just something I wanted to mention. I got a sale, which is nice. Who is that? And then we have one more thing to talk about. Another Fabinho, man. The Fabinho's were, they're selling like hotcakes right now. This is a GG. I bought some delis. I bought some Fabinho's today, some Rashford's, and then some of the other headliners that I had. Um, just some flips, right? I got a Goretzka at 130. He was really low this morning. Um, I think this card is definitely more than 150K worth it. There's just not as many center mids or CDMs. He's a box to box center mid. He's Bayern. He's German. Uh, and his road to the final card is like 700 something K. So this card being around like. 200,000 coins is what I feel like he should be in this market being inflated as it is. Um, so him getting panic sold today down to 130 was pretty nuts. Um, and yeah, we'll kind of be following that card in the next few days as well. But quickly at the end of this video, it's been way too long already. There's just been so much to talk about. High rated's are getting down to a very reasonable spot because especially today, we didn't have like a crazy SBC. We had Moise Keen, but like other than that, eh, you know? I do believe we'll get another SBC today on Saturday though. So if you're looking to invest in this stuff, try to get some on bid. Again, 86 is around 14,000 coins, 85s at the low eights, 84s under 4K for the really good linking ones, 87 rated around 21K. Those are getting low, 88s try to get 26, 27, and then the 89s try to get like middle to lower 30s too. But we're in club stock category, right? Because we are probably not too far away from a mid icon SBC and just more SBCs coming out during this promo. So all it takes is one big future stars SBC and you're seeing a lot of these guys go up in price. So a club stock this weekend, uh, and I would say even a club stock before the Saturday lightning rounds or Saturday content drop, I would feel it'd be a safe move. Um, because I do feel like they're going to be a lot of SBCs that come out during this promo. So let's see if we can snag like a Parejo here on bid under 15, 15,000 coins ish. Looks like a lot of people are bidding on him. Um, maybe like Isco or something like that would be a decent one too. But if you're somebody who wants to stock the club, um, it looks like there's a lot of bid competition in these cards right now, but maybe try to do a club stock buy a couple of them at least, you know, because they could go down one or two K more tomorrow at the most, if we don't get an SBC, but I feel like we will get an SBC and I keep saying tomorrow, I mean Saturday, today on foot. This video has been way too long already. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you're hyped about the promo and the new stuff we got today. The Odegaard is by far the number one thing, of course, just with the upgradable, grindable cards with like the, the different tiers, right? We have the 80 rated, then the 84, then the 85. I just think that stuff is flat cool. So I'm so glad that EA put this out. It just, again... The potential for the future is crazy with this type of objective and this type of upgradable objective. So I'm super duper pumped about that. If you enjoyed the video, smash the thumbs up on it. Comment down below if you have any questions and subscribe to the channel if you're new. It's been Nate, the Foot Accountant. Catch you guys later. Peace out.